Hey y'all, it's Mary Hyatt, and I'm so excited that you're here for this month's topic, which is all about fear. Whether it's the coronavirus or a tornado in Nashville, or maybe just the fear of your health, the fear of ending up alone, or the fear of not making enough money. You get the idea. We've got a lot of fear circling around. So this month, we're going to be talking about how to manage that fear and come back to a place of equilibrium and balance. So let's jump straight into it. Welcome to the Living Fully Alive podcast with Mary Hyatt, here to help you find your authentic voice, learn how to love yourself, and embrace your life. And now, your host, life and mindset coach, body love advocate, and doTERRA Presidential Diamond, Mary Hyatt. Hey, y'all. Real quick before we hop into today's episode, I am so excited to share a brand new resource with you. I have created a fear support kit just for you. It's totally free. And this kit includes a bonus audio guided meditation specifically created to help ground you and feel safe in your body. It also includes a PDF worksheet to help you rewrite your relationship to your fear, my favorite DIY essential oil recipes for combating fear, plus my number one mantra that I personally use for clearing out fearful energy. So follow the link below or head on over to maryhyatt.com forward slash fear kit. That's F-E-A-R-K-I-T to snag your fear support kit as my personal gift to you. Now here is this week's episode. Hey guys, it is Mary and I am excited to be with you today for our very final episode of the fear theme, which is our, man, it's been our focus for the past four episodes. And to be honest, I was a little bit like, you know, have we said it all? Is there anything else that we need to talk about with fear? We talked about how to ground in the midst of fear. We've talked about so many incredible tools to use specifically during this time to help you anchor into truth and to faith and to hope to really get you beyond that state of paralyzing fear and really into a place where you can manage it and hopefully, you know, move beyond it. So as I was thinking about this episode, I decided that I was going to do something that I've never done before because why the heck not? Now is the time. And if you guys could see what I'm looking at right now, man, oh man, what a little treat. My eyes. A tall drink of water right here. I'm telling you what. (laughs) A tall drink of water, Mm -hmm. a.k.a. my boo, my (laughs) bae, my boyfriend. (laughs) Welcome to the show, Bentley Caldwell. Well, hello, 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 hello. You do have a perfect radio voice. What this voice? Where's that one girl? <laughs> if in case you recognize his actual voice uh, here in a minute, ladies and gentlemen, yes, the Mary Hyatt show. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> I have had a few people who have asked, like, "Is that Bentley on your podcast?" I'm like, "Oh no, girl, I just hired that out somebody no, from no, India." It's James Earl Jones, young James Earl Jones. So you what? <laughs> nice. You wish. <laughs> I would do wish actually. Oh well. <laughs> I've been asking this for everybody who's come onto the show this month in particular because it's been a really like intense month. How you doing? Let's just uh, have a little quick check in. Okay, yeah, I'm um, doing all right. Doing okay. Got all the uh, the pandemic stuff going on. So, um, right. It's a uh, you know I'm a I'm an Enneagram seven, which is uh, what for the people. Um, the best, which is wait <laughs> what no. uh, typical. <laughs> No, uh, the Enneagram 7 is the enthusiast. Um, so we're kind of like the life of the party. We enjoy people. Um, I wouldn't say we're all extroverted, but a majority of us are are probably extroverted. Um, and so having to, you know, be in isolation, uh, you know, as much as I love my Mary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little rough. <laughs> it's been it's been hard, you know, uh, not being able to see my friends and so on and so forth. So, so I'm you know I'm making it work. I'm you know doing what's best for for the whole instead of just what's best for me. So there you go. Kudos! Can you have a golf clap? <laughs> you know what I think is actually fun about this episode is I don't. I mean, you you were my person, so like I have the most like banter, like easy banter with you. And I don't usually have that even like with Lindsley on the show. I mean, she's my, one of my best friends, mm-hmm. but 
She's this, no me, though. She's no you. Anyway, this is going to be like a whole different side of me, I think, that shows up for this show. And I'm like kind of excited about it because you like I'm like beaming from ear to ear. <laughs> Why do I feel like a schoolgirl right now? The crash. Mm-hmm. 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 It's just a little crash. Sorry. Oh, man. Well, guys, you are in for a treat. At least I think so. This could be a total bomb. Oh, it's going to be something. Stick around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about what we could talk about. Okay. So we've talked about fear, like I mentioned, like as it relates to coronavirus. Okay. Mm-hmm. So as it relates to, and the tornado, because we had that, that know, happened first. Right? Um, Nashville. Can we just have a moment? That was, it's been in this month. I know. I'm like, April, please be gentle. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, it's fingers crossed, but <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, uh, I know for most, most of the world, it's like, okay, like the coronavirus and the pandemic has kind of like shut them down but I, for us here in nashville it was like we had those horrific tornadoes yeah and then literally a week later it was like and eh, we need you to shut down your city again uh it was a devil whammy man. yeah it was it was rough we're still trying to figure that out yeah we still don't know what's happening <laughs> but all that to say is we've been talking about fear related to those situations like actual like that fear where you go are my basic needs going to be met? Mm-hmm. Kind of that primal fear. We've been talking a lot about primal fear. Am I going to end up alone? Am I safe? You know, some of those deeper, deeper rooted type fears. But I thought let's lighten it up a little bit because right. we can still talk about fear without it feeling like... Is my hair going to fall out? Yeah. Uh, you know, those are primal fears, man. Is my hair going to grow too far <laughs> since no one can get to a barber? I mean, it's... It's already looking it's a little, whoa, little rough. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I wasn't talking about me personally. Oh, sorry. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I got to go, guys. You're on your own here. Babe, you look, you look so lies, debonair lies, right now. Lies and fables. Quarantine nothing. <laughs> um, but I, the truth is, is fear is like a part of our everyday life. Like mm-hmm. outside of this kind of fear, which I think is new for most of us to experience, we're all experiencing fear every single day of our lives, mm-hmm. whether we're aware of it or not. and. The, the truth is, regardless of what kind of fear it is, it's like fear's job is to keep us safe. Like 100% keep us right in our little, um, what do they call that? Like your um, comfort, comfort zone. zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and you know that saying that says everything that you want in life is right outside of your comfort zone? Mm-hmm. I mean, d- is that true? I I agree. I would have to say so. Okay, tell me why. Um, I think... A lot of times you said that fear keeps us safe. Fear can also keep us complacent as well. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, um, there, there's a time to be safe, but then there's also a time to kind of like stretch your stretch your boundaries a little bit. If you're a kid and, you know, yeah, you're supposed to stay in the yard, but, you know, when you turn 16 – can't still stay in the yard mm. yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. What so it's like as you grow um you need to grow your your surroundings your your comfort zones your boundaries you mm. know um and so as humans we should always consistently be trying to grow and become a better version of ourselves or return back to the original version of ourselves. Ooh, Ooh, getting deep, like Bentley. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> like a swimming pool, what deep? Anyway. Um. <laughs> you might be the first person to have jokes on the show. So that's oh, man. Good. Oh. <laughs> All day. Um, what Mary doesn't know, this is a little aside. She put her uh, fingers in her in her ears, oh, so God. she doesn't know I'm actually going to take over her podcast. Oh, no. um, so stay tuned. She's actually going to end up doing my intro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so sure. <laughs> Okay, back to your swimming anyway, pool. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um yeah, so I would I would say that yeah, like um you do your life is the life you want is outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right and I like that you said growth because I think like how does growth happen or how does it, even like a rebirth happen? It is in that place of pain of being uncomfortable, mm-hmm. of, of getting outside of your only one way of seeing something and mm-hmm. being stretched. Like I think about in order to grow, we have to be stretched. Mm-hmm. Otherwise we stay exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just let's have a moment for everybody, including ourselves to think about people that we know who have not chosen to grow, who are, you know, 
sort of living the same life since high school, since college, mm-hmm. fast forward, their lives are relatively the same. And to me, if you peeled it back and you peeled those layers back, it's like the root of that is fear. Mm-hmm. There's and whether they're, I would imagine people in that situation probably aren't super aware and have the consciousness that they are fearful. But I think that that's what keeps us playing small is yeah. our fear. Yeah, yeah, I would say that a lot of people in those um, situations are using other excuses instead Ooh, like of what? saying the word fear. You know, oh, well, um, I have a kid or, oh, I'm married or, you know, or, oh, I, I can't do this because I'm not tall enough from, mm. you know, not skinny enough where I'm this, that, and the other, you know, and it, not it smart have, enough, not smart enough. Don't I didn't have enough from, money. Yeah. I didn't come from the right background. Yep. Um, my race is a hindrance, you know, my religion, you know, um, yeah. you know, people use any kind of excuse to mask the fact that it's just really fear. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you're saying that because you're so right. Like fear is so threatening to admit. Mm hmm. I'm just thinking, I'm like, why is that? Like, why are we so afraid to say? I mean, I realize it's like super vulnerable. Yeah. Except that we're all feeling it. I mean, we all have that in some capacity. I think it is. It's one of those things where if you say what you're afraid of, you almost fear that you're the only one. Yeah. And it's like the fear of exposure. Yeah. 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 Because if I just open myself up completely and you get to see all of my insides, you know, it's like, "Ah, here I am, you know. And, the whole thing is, it's like somebody's waiting for you to open yourself up so then they can open themselves up, you know, because anytime you step outside of your comfort zone, you give someone else permission to step out of their comfort zone. And that's the cool yeah. thing about it, you know. It's contagious either way. Like you think about that old saying, I think it was Jim Rohn who said, like, you're the average of the five people closest to you. Mm-hmm. And you think about if you're in a circle and a group of people who are kind of like paralyzed by fear, whether they're calling it that or not, Mm -hmm. but using all the excuses, staying the same, playing small, then the same is true. Like if you have a group of friends that is committed to growth and it's like, like I would say for us, Mm -hmm. this is true for us. Like the people we surround ourselves with are hurling themselves off the cliff. For real. Like for real. And I mean, we've had so many moments of this of being like, Good Lord, like we grow so fast and we change so fast. Mm -hmm. But I think that has to do with like the people we surround ourselves with are leaning into fear and seeing fear as something that's not to be um, telling us to stop, but actually it's an invitation. Yeah, it's a catapult. You know, yeah. it, it's it's the the fodder for the cannon to. Nice word. You know, I, I read a little bit. You know? <laughs> fodder, yes. The fodder. That's probably wrong. Somebody's like, it's not called fodder. Hey, Jesus. you fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Somebody's gonna be in your comment section like, who is this guy? Who Get him out of here. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think we we have surrounded ourselves with people who who, like you said, like use fear as almost like a springboard yeah. to you know, dive into the deep end. Oh, circle back to the swimming pool. What up? Oh my gosh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Lord. Um, well that, you know, I think what that is, is what, what's happening is the people that we surround ourselves with have reframed the definition of fear, you know, have reframed the, per- and not even the definition, but, but the purpose of fear, mm-hmm. because I think that we have been taught typically whatever we're afraid of, you know, you think about, monsters like when you're little kids like if you're afraid of the monster in the closet or the mm-hmm. monster under the bed you know it's almost like we had been taught like you know do the jesus prayer or that there's it's that's scary it's evil it's something that we need to um move away from to mm-hmm. resist to back back up from that fear is out to get us mm-hmm. and or whatever it is that we're afraid of is out to get us and i think in our adult lives we feel like that it's like let's say we um, want to start a business. Somebody who's listening wants to start a business. Mm-hmm. And then all of those doubts start coming in to the mind. You can't do this. You're mm-hmm. too old. You're too young. You're not smart enough. You don't have enough money to get this thing off the ground. Who's going to listen to you? Who cares about your voice? All those, those elements that are showing up, mm-hmm. that's fear, right? And so we're taught that, oh, that means I shouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't 
write that book. I shouldn't start that business. Like that must give, that must be like God's way of telling me that this isn't for me. And what I feel like our friends have done. And I think what a lot of like entrepreneurs in particular have done is say, no, like my dad said, um, about public speaking, like he gets still to this day, like those butterflies, that like scary feeling. And he said, he reframed it and he said, this is my body's way of preparing for peak performance. Nice. He reframed like almost debilitating fear, like which would which would usually say, I have stage fright. I can't speak because I have stage fright. I feel like I'm going to throw up. And he reframed that too. This is my body's way of preparing for peak performance. It's like fear is a tool that says you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. Lean in, you're on to something. And I feel like I'm like, you've probably experienced that on so many levels. Well, like... Hey, y'all, I just wanted to interrupt this episode real quick to remind you to subscribe to this podcast. I know that emails get lost in your spam folder, so subscribing means my episodes come right to your phone. So go ahead, hit that quick little subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the Living Fully Alive episodes. Plus, in addition to subscribing to the podcast, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I don't know if you know this, but I have been releasing guided meditations every Monday over on YouTube, and you're not going to hear them here. So if you've been wanting to start an easy meditation practice, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on my short 15 minute guided meditations. All right. Now back to this week's episode. I mean, when I used to play music, I mean, it was for a while. Well, I guess I go back to when I was a musical theater performer, you know, I would always um, clam up before auditions or before performances because I'd be (laughs) thinking about, oh, gosh, Mm -hmm. I got to do this, this, that, and the other. And then fear would come in. And I remember I had a a teacher um, who basically was just like, no, like that, that energy, that fear, that, that what you feel is really just energy to propel you Mm. through this through this performance or through this audition, you know? And she would say, like, harness, like, learn to harness that energy mm. because it's there for a reason. You know, it, it's it's there because your body's going, Ooh, it's, it's adrenaline. Right, right, right. I you was going to say, it's that, actually, like, biological. Yeah, it's adrenaline, you know? And, and so it's just, like, take that adrenaline and focus it and put it towards what you're doing, your initiative, your, your, your dream, if you will. Right. You know, and... Once I started doing that, it just everything just kind of fell into place, and you know, and now it's like you want that energy, mm. you know. Is that like when people say like you get addicted to the high? Well, it's not so much you get addicted to the high, but it just lets you know that you're alive. Oh, I like that. You know, I know for me, and I don't know if anybody else does this, but I know for me when I was performing, I never wanted to when I was, especially when I was doing music. Plays, I wanted to be almost perfect, uh, especially with my lines, just because I didn't want to be unprepared. But with music, I always wanted just a little sense of not knowing. Yeah, totally. You know, so that way it wouldn't get routine. You know, I wouldn't yeah. check out and be like up there singing, but thinking about where I was going to eat after. You right, know? totally. <laughs> you know, it was like I was always present and it always helped me to have that energy so before the show, it's where I go, okay, here we go. Like, all right, let's go. Instead of going, all right, let's do it. Here we go. All right. Yeah. You know? I actually really love that because, like, I feel like what you're saying is fear invites us into the present moment. Mm-hmm. Like, because you can't escape. Like, when you're fearful, you have to be right there in mm-hmm. time and space in that moment yeah. because there's, like, a high level of uncertainty in some aspects. Yeah. And I think about that with the work that I do, and I know that a lot of people that listen are business owners, entrepreneurs, starting things that they've mm-hmm. never done before, like starting businesses. And there is this element of, oh, my God, like, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Am I going to fall flat on my face? But it requires that in that we can be just present. hmm and go, what's what's here for me? Like, mm. if you're present, your senses are like on full alert. Like you are, you can see things, you have unbelievable clarity. Like mm-hmm. if you think about, for example, a rabbit who is threatened by a um, predator, 
you better believe that that rabbit rabbit is able to like jump, skip, see things almost like a grid Mm -hmm. that it's looking at to escape from the predator. It's like it probably quote unquote performs at such a higher level Mm -hmm. than if it was just like, you know, obviously it would get eaten otherwise. <laughs> just <laughs> you know? be bopping through the... Just be bopping around. But it's like, there's something cool about fear and that yeah. it like helps us see the way through sometimes. Mm-hmm. And like, because you're so like in the moment, so present. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I, yeah. So do I. <laughs> you know, you were saying, you said something about um, with the plays, you wanted to be perfect, which made me think of perfectionism. And it made me mm-hmm. think of this quote by Elizabeth Gilbert And if anybody knows her, she wrote that book, Eat, Pray, Love. I love that freaking book, y'all. In the movie. Oh, God. Can we watch that? Shoot. (laughs) Can we watch that later? Um, It's so good. It makes me cry every single... I didn't hear that that question. Sorry. Can we watch Eat, Pray, Love together? Oh, man. I think something's breaking up. What? (laughs) (laughs) I said something, not us. I was like, oh, God. (laughs) Oh, Lord. (laughs) Um, No, but she also wrote a book called Big Magic, which Mm -hmm. is all about... um, working with fear in the terms of creativity, like writing a book, doing a podcast, doing an art project, something that is creative. And she says, I think perfectionism is just a high end hot, hot couture. Is that you said? Mm-hmm. I had to ask my hot, fashion, hot couture. fashion guru. Okay. I'm going to start, I'm going to start again. Uh, I think perfectionism is just a high end hot couture version of fear. I think perfectionism is just fear and fancy shoes and a mink coat pretending to be elegant when actually it's just terrified. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, yeah, Isn't yeah. that good? Yeah, I um, when I was a little bit younger, probably. In... <laughs> <laughs> you go, you guys can't see. So before we got started. So I, I've been a musician for for a good little while, and Mary was like, make sure you speak directly into the mic and don't like let your face go to either side. And he was <laughs> like, oh please! I was like, like girl, I got this. What you shoot? I'm, I'm professional. And literally, right, right, just a few seconds ago, I was like looking off, and my face was like off to the right. She just looks at me, and goes back in front. <laughs> I gotta have good sound quality for the people. <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> you were saying. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I was uh, a little younger, probably in my uh, mid to to early early to mid twenties. I read a book called um, "Dare to Be a Man," and um, one of the things that I just took from that book was. Um, it was, it just said basically like good happens but excellence is intentional mm-hmm. you know and perfection is the inner is the enemy of excellence mm. my mom used to say don't let the best be the enemy of the good mm. and i love that it's like that idea of just start, just, Mm -hmm. you know, release something in the entrepreneurial world, they say, just launch. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be perfect. And I think sometimes we hide under this need for it to all be figured out, everything to be right, having all the pieces at their best level. And you think about how many books do not get written Mm -hmm. because people think they're not a great great writer. And perfection is boring. Like, let's yeah. be real. Like, perfection is boring. Like, if you Very saw true. just, like, a per- a perfect show, you'd be like, I mean, it was good. But if you saw a show where, you know, the lead singer flubbed some words, but then you got to see the lead singer in all of his or her, like, you know, mm. trueness, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, that was that show was so great because he did that thing or she did that thing and it made us laugh because, you know. Totally. She, they they forgot a word or whatever, whatever, you know? And it's like yeah. that is the performances and the and and the things that we're drawn to are imperfect. Yeah. Totally. You know? It's like but that they're excellent. Okay. Okay, say that again. So the things that we are drawn to are imperfect, but they are excellent. Yeah, because the reality is is that perfectionism doesn't exist out there. Like it's not something you can even achieve. And so the idea that you, it's, it's a cover up, you know, it's like a Mm -hmm. really great cover up to fear. And I think about that saying too, and I don't know where this originated, that stress is just the uh, achievers word for fear. 
Mm. It's like, God, I'm so stressed about this or I'm really stressed about this project. And what we're really mm. saying is I'm terrified. I'm yeah. afraid. I'm fearful. And and that's why it's kind of normalized that the human experience is to have fear be present. Like we cannot live without fear. That's just whoever made up the rules. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fear is a part of the game. Mm -hmm. And I think when we can kind of go back to the idea of reframing this, gosh, it like opens up so much where you don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of part of the process in creating something and delivering something and showing up in the world. And to me, fear, like kind of changing the way we're talking about it, fear mm -hmm. to me is also a um, indicator that we need to look at something. Mm. Okay. So like if Do I'm tell. like, if I'm afraid to speak my voice, mm -hmm. right? Like I can remember this in my marriage. I was terrified to be who I was. Mm. And I was so afraid that I was going to be rejected, that I was going to be judged, that I was going to be criticized. Mm -hmm. It felt so scary to show up who in who I was and to use my voice to ask for what I needed. The thought of having boundaries, like when I was married, the thought of having boundaries, like was so scary to me. Mm -hmm. And that fear to me was a really like I didn't know it for years and years and years until I started doing this work. But it was like f that fear was actually telling me something mm. like, hey, wait a second, girl, like you don't need to be afraid of using your voice inside of your relationship. What's up with the relationship where that isn't a safe space for mm -hmm. you to say, hey, I'm disappointed or I need something more mm -hmm. or I would like something to be different or I want something, you know, mm -hmm. not even need, but I just want something. And for me, that fear was like inviting me to look deeper into areas in my life that I needed to give some attention to that mm -hmm. weren't working. And the fear was basically like the alarm bell that was going off that was saying, hey, pay attention here. Something's off. And in that case, like that fear was so useful for me. Like mm -hmm. that was, that was the, the warning sign that later I could, you know, really dive into and go, Oh, wait a second. There's a lot of dysfunction here. I've come so far away from who I was mm -hmm. and beginning that journey of coming back home to myself. I mean, mm -hmm. but that was an instance of, I am afraid to use my voice. I'm mm -hmm. afraid to be me. I'm afraid to step into my power, my strength. And it wasn't because of, you know, him. It wasn't about that. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was all the things that had gone along the way that I kept shrinking and getting quiet and playing smaller. And we were just talking about this on our walk the other day when we walked, because what else are we going to do right now? <laughs> A lot of walks oh, going on. <laughs> Get my summer body ready, yo. Oh, we don't talk about uh, weight and bodies on this show. What? Thank you very much. Um, you can have whatever body, body you want, people. I <laughs> <laughs> That was me, you know, giving him the tap of quiet now. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't know you were gonna, nah. didn't know you're gonna get reprimanded on the show. <laughs> Twice now. <laughs> get your mic right. <laughs> Don't talk mic. about bodies, okay? <laughs> talk about my bad. Um, I asked all I asked if I, <laughs> before this, I was like, Am I allowed to cuss? I didn't know I wasn't supposed to talk about <laughs> summer. I know bodies. I forgot to give you the uh, guest podcast <laughs> rules. <laughs> Um, oh, okay, so we were walking because it feels good to move uh, our bodies. Um, so, <laughs> so we were on a walk and <laughs> we were talking about both of us. I'll speak for myself, but we were sharing this experience that both of us felt like there was this invitation to step into our greatness, to step into a part of ourselves that we haven't shown up as before yet. And for both of us, there was fear in that, that, that somehow what was on the other end of like, for me, stepping into being like a powerhouse boss, babe person that, you know, is writing books and is speaking and is just operating at a really high level, which I truly believe like I'm called to do and created to do and meant to do that. There was this fear that was limiting me, that was stopping me from embracing the bigness of who I truly am, the bigness of what I was created to do. And for me, I was able through that walk, because it was like six miles long, I was able to kind of distill down and realize, oh, the fear is, and this is like a theme in my life that goes back to my primal fear, was the fear is if I am really successful, like I'm already successful, but like, you know, mm -hmm. boats and 
you know, Ferraris Ooh. successful. I don't know. I don't even uh, care I, about those I, things, I but <laughs> just throwing that out there. You know what I'm talking about? Mad money, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that I would be left, that I would end up alone, that, that's, mm-hmm. that you in this case, or like whoever I was with, but in this case, you would leave me because I'd be too big, mm. that I would be too bright and that somebody couldn't um, hang with that. You know, mm-hmm. that they would feel like um, threatened by that. And mm-hmm. that has been a story in my past. Mm-hmm. And I've, and my deep fear is, is abandonment, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh my God, I'm playing small because me and my bigness, me and my brightness in the equation in my head, again, it feels real, but it's not true, mm-hmm. is I will be left. I'll end up alone. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that is controlling my story. That is keeping me... It, it, choosing safety mm-hmm. over what it was, what it is really in my makeup of greatness. Yeah. yeah. So I want to, I saw you write things over there down. <laughs> Got some notes. Well, no, no. So it was, it was interesting when you were telling the story about, you know, your marriage and things like that. You said, um, when you felt the fear, you asked why, mm. you know, and it's like a lot of people don't ask why. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't ask, like, what is this? Right. And why am I feeling this? You know? Yeah. And you know what I just thought of? The reason I could do that was because I disassociated from my fear. It's almost like I took my fear and I pushed back from it and I stretched out my hand holding the fear and I was looking at mm-hmm. it from an analytical perspective. Like yeah, I was yeah. I was analyzing it. I was trying to understand like fear, what are you here to tell me? Mm-hmm. Like as if fear were um a messenger. A messenger. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, that's that's the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, was a messenger like the, and a teacher. Mm-hmm. Like what are you here to teach me? What are you here to illuminate for me? What am I supposed yeah. to notice? What's your message? Yeah. And when you can disassociate, and I mean that in a healthy way, like yeah, yeah. distance from it, like pull it out of your body and out of your identity of I'm afraid to, I'm having a fearful experience or this fear is showing up in my life because, and, and see that there's a, it's not by mistake. There's a reason for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's good. Um, thank you for that yeah, insight. Yeah, yeah. You know, grabby listening to you and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, this, this brings to mind. And by the way, you you very conveniently got to get out of that your experience on that walk, but we might circle no, back. No, no, no. I was just, you know what? Go ahead. Go no, on now. No, 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 no. I was listening to you. you know? <laughs> it's your show. I'm just here. I'm a sidekick right oh now. Oh my god. Okay, so this is <laughs> this is actually. I'm going to read you this quote, and okay. then you can comment on it because I think it has to do with what we were talking about on our walk. But it's a Marianne okay. Williamson quote. All right. And forget what you feel about her, okay? But just listen to the quote. Not you, but just collectively. People have some opinions. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) I love this quote. She said, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Mm -hmm. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. I mean, that's some. I I, I agree. I can't believe she stole it from Coach Carter. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. there's a, there's a movie, a basketball movie. The, one of the characters gives like literally that entire speech. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So anyway, <laughs> thank you for your sports reference. I mean, you know, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> no, but I'm just curious, like when you hear that, because obviously you've heard that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but thinking about your journey of like stepping into your greatness. Do you agree with that? Do you think it's your lightness, your your light, your um, the fear is not about that you're inadequate, but it's that you are powerful beyond measure? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I would I would agree with that. Um, I think a lot of times um, people are, you know, on the lines of greatness. People are afraid of their greatness. Yeah. You know, um, I want to say as a William Shakespeare uh, quote, but it's like, be not afraid of thine greatness, mm. you know? Um, and I think people are, are, are afraid of, of their greatness because it's uncharted territory. Yeah. You know, it's, you, you see other people's greatness and you're just like, Oh, you know, that's them. That's not me, you know? Yeah. And so you, it's almost like you, 
are afraid of how bright your light is. And let's kind of dissect that because mm-hmm. it's interesting. It doesn't, it seems counterintuitive that you would be afraid of being bright. Yeah. Well, because it's like <laughs> one of my favorite like quotes I've seen on the internet was like, you know, the sun doesn't care if it blinds you. Mm. You know, it's like the sun's not going to go, oh, wait, 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 I'm too big, I'm too bright, I'm too hot. You know, it's like, no, no, I have a job to do. Like, my job is to shine. My job is to shine. My job is to keep this solar system going, yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. you know. And I think um, I think when people feel like they're shining too bright, it's... They feel like they're too much, kind of like what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like if I'm too big, if I'm too bright, if I'm too much, then I won't get loved. Or, you know, people will take advantage of me. Yeah. Or people will start talking behind my back. Who does he think he is? Who does she think she is? Yeah. You know, and I think it's the, I think it's, it's the fear of, almost like the fear of unknown, of the unknown. Mm-hmm. I don't know what these people are going to say about me. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen if I go to that next level. Well, and we hear so many stories of like, um, almost like tales Mm -hmm. that, that warn us not to be, you know, things like don't be bigger than your britches. Oh yeah. yeah, You know, like sayings like that, that we've heard growing up, you know, um, that kind of like, well, who do you think you are? And so I think we've received messaging along the way. And I think this is really important for each of us to explore. What is the messaging that I received around success Mm -hmm. around using my voice around having lots of money Mm -hmm. around being known what was the messaging because a lot of times if you think about your parents and like even if you heard your mom in a jealous tone talking Mm -hmm. about your neighbor yeah. You know, the Joneses, the you Joneses. Know, yeah. Like the Joneses. Yeah. Right. Like, totally. You know, yeah, and it's yeah. like there's messaging there. And mm-hmm. I think it's our job to kind of dissect that and go, wait a second. Like, do I want that to be true for me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, do yeah. I want to continue to play by these rules? And one of my favorite questions as a coach to ask people is what rules are you creating that aren't really rules? Mm. And, you know, it's like in this, in the case of fear, it's like what rules would fear make up and what rules would love make up? Mm -hmm. Because fear doesn't get a voice. Fear. That's one of our little sayings, isn't it? it Fear, fear doesn't get a voice and fear doesn't get a vote. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going back to Elizabeth Gilbert in that book, Big Magic, she talks about how fear is going to be along for the journey. Oh, yeah. Always. So you need to have a conversation with fear that's basically like, listen. You can have a seat in the car. You can have a voice, but you're not driving. You you are not calling the shots. You're not choosing the roadmap. Mm-hmm. But you can hang in the car. I mean, like you could think you could think of it as like this, like in that same vein of that metaphor of the car and the journey. You can think of it as like fear is gasoline. Now, if you mm. use gasoline in a destructive way, it's going to blow up your car. Right. But if you turn around and use gasoline in the way that it's supposed to be used as fuel, it'll take you all the way through the journey. Yeah, that's good. You know, and so it's, so fear is your gasoline on the journey. Now it's your decision of how you want to use that gasoline, how you want to use that Mm. fear. That's so good. I speak in metaphors. You do. You're so good at it. I'm so bad. You're so good at it. (laughs) That's kind of an inside joke. I'm really bad at metaphors, y'all. Just today I was on a podcast for somebody else's podcast. And I was like, you know, that thing where you like, you put your umbrella on the hook and they're like, hang your hat. And I was like, yeah, that's it. That's the one. Yep. (laughs) Y'all, it's a real issue. (laughs) But here we are. I have my own podcast, guys. I'm doing something right. Um, Truth. Okay, so this kind of goes back to the idea of like our greatness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I think that there is, this is, I don't want to get like insanely spiritual on this, but yeah. I do think that there is a part to, we should acknowledge of like real resistance to mm-hmm. when we're on the right path. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's kind of that idea of like shadow and light. Mm-hmm. It's like when we are moving towards who we were created to be our bigness, our brightness, whatever that is. It doesn't have to mean, you know, being on stage and making tons of money or whatever. Yeah. That's different for each person. But whatever is our, our definition of who our, what our greatness is, when we're on that path and we're going that way, there inevitably 
ends up being things that come in and try to sabotage the situation. Mm -hmm. People just like weird challenges, traffic yeah. delays. Yeah. I mean, not right now, but <laughs> um, you know, your internet going down. Yeah, and yeah. I, every time I have some kind of form of resistance, I always say, Ooh, I'm getting at something good. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I'm going to just use some old Christian speak real quick. Awesome. Um, that's basically like, you know, Satan wants to keep me down, mm -hmm. you know, but it's that kind of idea of like, when I am, on to something, mm -hmm. when I am living in my purpose, when I am like truly in alignment, there can be some resistance that shows up Yeah, that is basically saying, you sure? Mm -hmm. You sure you want to do this? You sure you don't want to just stay right here in this comfortable little, you know, yep. spot? Like you've got your feet in, you know, in your cozy socks, you've got your blanket on, you sure you don't want to stay here? Mm -hmm. Over there's the wilderness, you know, so you've got like the internal chatter that's going on that shows mm -hmm. up as a resistance who do you think you are? You can't do this. Remember last time you tried, you failed. Mm -hmm. You know, remember, remember what your dad used to say about you, you know, and you get all that messaging going on inside of you. And then you get like actual physical resistance. Like yeah, I said, yeah. the internet goes down. Something doesn't get into you on time. You don't publish on time. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that happen in that sabotage, but it's like, man, to me, again, reframing it. It's like, I have learned that when resistance shows up, I'm creating something mm -hmm. amazing yeah like amazing um did anything like that happen to you like i'm just thinking of like projects that you've done like your album that you had created or did you ever experience like either internal or external resistance um yeah so when i released my last album um out of nowhere people were like reaching out to me and like <laughs> it's to stay on the on the Christian thing, and they had quote unquote words from God, mm -hmm. um, literally telling me that I shouldn't release the album, wow. and that you know I was being you know foolish or prideful and boastful, and I was going to fail, and Whoa. this that, and the other, and I had to just go, no, 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 no. I know what's truth for me, and what's true wow. for me is not you know and that's tricky when it's like yeah. when it's when it's clouded or um cloaked in mm -hmm. that spirituality yeah by people who you love and trust Ooh. yeah and i'll tell you what resistance <laughs> right? when it comes from your family Oof, man that's a real gut check and that's when you have to know like they say knowing your knower you know knowing your knower <laughs> knowing your knower that's cute. um that that you're on the right path you know, and that you are doing the right thing. You know, for me, I know that when that came, when that came up, I looked inward yeah, to myself to say, okay, Bentley, like, are your, you know, are your motives pure? You know, like, do you feel that this is the right thing to do? Yeah. And I checked all the boxes <laughs> and I said, you know what, we're going to do it. Well, and sometimes the thing that's right to do seems crazy to other people. Yeah. It doesn't actually make a whole lot of sense. Like there's yeah. been so many times in my life where in the midst of fear and then I've got that resistance showing up and it's saying, don't do this, don't do this. And people are saying, you're crazy for, for doing this. Mm -hmm. It's like, no there's something in me that knows that this is right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I know it doesn't make sense right now, but some I've been given some kind of wisdom or intuition mm -hmm. to see beyond what seems like practical yeah. or safe. And I mean, obviously a lot of people's structures is to stay safe. So mm -hmm. anything that's outside of that, that feels risky, yeah. this, people are going to come and come up against that. And it's yeah. like knowing your knower, mm -hmm. like you are the one who knows your path. Mm -hmm. And that is the, um, kind of antidote to fear, I think, in a lot of ways of like, no, like, thank you, fear. You know, thank you for teaching me something. Thank you for showing up to invite me to look at something in a deeper way, mm -hmm. whatever that might be, because it does give you an opportunity to question like, all right, what is my motive here? Mm -hmm. What is my purpose here? It Why am I doing you this? Double down on your totally on your motive and your yeah, and your purpose. It's you like, go, no, yeah, this is this is what no, this is right. Yeah, this is right. Um, Gosh, that's so, like such a powerful kind of way of thinking about it. And, um, you know, it kind of brings me to kind of like end with this a little bit, I think is talking about the idea of bravery. 
mm-hmm. encourage. I remember mm-hmm. this was years ago. I can't remember where I kind of first understood this idea of, oh, hi. <laughs> Y'all, we're so in love. It's oh, so cute. Oh, my God. All right, keep going. He just looked at me with little loving eyes and I waved at me. It was the worst face ever. <laughs> um, little snarl. Oh, my God. Okay, so I can't remember where I heard this last, but... There was this idea that bravery and courage is moving forward in the midst of fear. Mm. And I think most of us think that in order to do something that we feel passionate about or convicted about or um, just like what that we're ready to do, that we have to be in an absence of fear, like fearless. Like, like I'm going to, yeah, in yeah. order to jump off the cliff, I got to be fearless. And until I'm fearless, I'm not going to make a move. Mm. And the idea of like the definition of courage is moving forward in spite of fear. Mm -hmm. You think about the definition of bravery is doing something when it's scary. Mm -hmm. And it's like, gosh, like how can we cultivate more courage and more bravery? Like that question, my sister asked me this when I was in high school, Megan, she said, what would you do if you were brave? Mm -hmm. And I love asking that question to myself often because it like, gives me a pause to divorce myself of the fear and say fear weren't going to win. Mm -hmm. If fear wasn't going to be the voice that I listened to, but I still was fearful. Mm -hmm. If it was still scary, what would I do if I was brave? You think about like warriors who Mm -hmm. like go into battle, literally like charge forward Mm -hmm. when they could meet their death. And mm-hmm. they lean in and they lean into their sword and they, and they literally gallop into the enemy. It's like, that is what it's about. It's like the courage, the bravery to lean into the fear, lean into the discomfort when it might kill us, but usually it's going to give us life. Mm-hmm. It's usually the very thing that we're most afraid of is the very thing that we need to be doing. Yep. Don't you agree? I, I do agree. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just like, yeah, like, just like having a little moment with that. I mean, no, you you hit the the nail on the head there yeah i um yeah i think yeah man when you it's like when you feel feel the fear it's like lean into it and then just like damn the torpedoes and go full steam ahead you know um because i would you agree if i if i said that fear can almost be a friend totally yeah i mean yes i like i think that that's like the the message that I've that I've just learned over the years is mm-hmm. like fear is my companion. Yeah, yeah. It's going with me. We've yeah. got backpacks on together. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're traveling up the mountain together. You got your Nalgene and your Chacos. <laughs> <laughs> got my power bar. <laughs> got your power bar. Um <laughs> when was the last time you heard somebody talk about a power bar? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Brought it from the vault. Well, there it is. Um no, but it's so true. Like fear is a friend mm-hmm. and it just wants to be validated and heard. Like I hear you. I hear mm-hmm. that this feels really scary. I hear that this is really frightening. I know you have a lot of people telling you you can't do it. And like what we always say, those three things, I hear you, I see you, you matter. Mm -hmm. And like talking to the fear from that place, like I hear you, you get to have a voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be the one leading this. Yeah, I'm in charge. I've got my hands behind the steering wheel. Fear you do not. Mm -hmm. And But I hear you. Yeah, And I get it. It's ancient. It's Mm -hmm. old. It's learned. It's a pattern. You were given this way of thinking. I get it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to choose to move forward yep. anyways. Yep. Preach on, sister. Mm, preach on, my brother. Hallelujah. Um, well, I feel like that's a good place to <laughs> just, just stop. Shut it down right there. <laughs> Y'all, I hope this was a interesting conversation about fear mm-hmm. that is a little bit different than how you've been discussing it before. And I hope that you have thoroughly enjoyed my very special guests hey girl hey how you doing (laughs) no seriously Bentley (laughs) thanks for letting me convince you to be on today oh my gosh no hey I didn't have anything else to do you know (laughs) I know it's just like you know hanging around like hey you want to be on this podcast (laughs) (laughs) but no thank you for uh inviting me on to your podcast I am so proud of you thanks and uh I think you're brilliant I think you're amazing and uh I'd love to see you shine so uh keep shining girl Mm. 
<laughs> can make me blush. Oh, she is blushing. Oh, gosh. Oh, Lord. Have mercy. Okay. And on that note, we will see you guys next week with a brand new episode, a brand new topic for next month. But until then, remember that the purpose of life is to be grateful, to be mm. great, and to be full. Talk to you all next week. Bye. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you got some amazing nuggets to take home and start implementing into your life. And if you're looking for the show notes and links, head on over to maryhyatt.com forward slash show. And if you loved it, why not bring your girlfriends along this journey of becoming fully alive with you? Just give a quick share of this episode to your social channels and enjoy those debriefing convos with your besties. Thanks again. And I can't wait to connect with you next week.